Hello, I'm Paul Fisher. Welcome to Productive Computing. So if you have not yet used JavaScript in the web viewer because it looks too complicated or it feels too unfamiliar, then this series is specifically for you. In this video, we're going to go out to the web, locate an open source JavaScript project, and bring it into our solution. And we'll start by making as few possible changes to the interface of a web page to make it work the way we want in FileMaker. Then in subsequent videos, we'll keep coming back to this same project and refine it further and further as we learn more about JavaScript, eventually getting to the new features in FileMaker 19. Our end product will be a simple feature that uses a web viewer to compare the difference between two fields so that when I make a small change and I leave the field, it will automatically show me what's been removed and what's been added. So let's begin where most of us do. I did a Google search for text compare open source and it brought me to a list of several options here and I settled on this list of open source projects. After looking around, this diff matched patch looks good. I like that it's an Apache 2.0 license. It's stored on GitHub and it has a demo so we can see if it works the way we want. And it was originally built for Google Docs. So we go to the GitHub and it's here that we can download the code. But what I'm interested in right now is looking to see if this does what we want. I've got text one, I've got text two. And when I click compute diff, aha, that's fantastic. Look at this sample file here. You'll see that I have um, two global fields, one for HTML and one for JavaScript. And if we go into the Manage database, we can see that I have two text fields here that are normal, and then these two global fields, everything's being combined into this calculation field, which is basically substituting JavaScript in brackets or text one and text two in brackets for the values in their corresponding fields and producing my final HTML that's displayed in my web viewer. Now if we go back to our web page, we can right click and view page source. And this is what makes it work. This is HTML. Now there is JavaScript in here, you'll see. Now before we go any further, let's look at this page source in a more visually representative way. So every HTML page will have a HTML element as the top element. Then it has a head and a body. The head is the invisible part and the body is the part that gets displayed. And that's why we put a script element in the head that calls the text file of our diff match patch.js. We also have a script in the body tag. There's also a form element. And lastly, we have the div element. This is the most generic of HTML elements. It's basically an empty box. Additionally, there are input elements that go inside of a form. And text is the most basic one. That's a single line of text. A text area is multiple lines. And you need to tell it how many lines to display. We also have nested DT tags within a DL element and inside of that is an input type of radio. So radio buttons work differently in HTML than they do in FileMaker. They need to be in a nested format so that HTML knows that they're associated together and the mutually exclusive attributes can apply. And lastly, in a form, we have input type of button that is uh, assigned on click to execute the function launch, which is like telling a button in FileMaker to run a script. So in order to make this HTML work with our FileMaker solution, we want to make a few changes. And the first one is to modify the script element in the head. Instead of that referencing an external JavaScript file, we want to put in a string that will be replaced with the JavaScript global field. Likewise, in the text area, we want to substitute the provided text with a string that we will substitute in the values from our text fields. And lastly, 
We don't necessarily need to remove the button, but we want to modify the body tag so that it calls the function launch. And we can do that by putting on load equals launch function. And the effect of that will be as soon as the page loads, it will basically act like the button has been clicked and the end user only sees the end results. We'll need to remove other elements from the page to get that clean uh, results only look, but this is the basics. So let's make this work. We go back into our source and we select all and we copy and we're going to paste that into our demonstration file, which let's go to a different layout that makes this a little more visible. And we put it in our HTML global field and now we have the basic structure of the page, but you notice we have no interactivity. So we go back to our source code and we follow this link to the JavaScript file and that will get us the source code for the JavaScript. And when we paste that in the JavaScript field, we still don't have any functionality. So I'm going to paste this source code into text edit. If we go into script and we remove the source portion and here we put our substitution string. We can copy this and paste it into our field. And now when we push the button, we get the results we expect. Likewise, we wanted to substitute um, the text that was provided with our substitution string, which is text underscore one. So in text edit, I hit command F and I paste that text and here it is, it found it in the HTML. So I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to type in there text underscore one. I'm going to do the same thing for the text in text version two. And there it is. And I'm going to substitute that with text underscore two. Now I'm going to copy, select all and copy, and I'm going to paste this in my HTML global. And now you see, like our previous example, it grabbed the values from our text fields and it put them in here. And now when we hit the compute, we get the result that we saw before. So remember when we set up our calculation field, we decided that JavaScript in brackets would be the text that we would substitute out for the value in our FileMaker field. Same with text one and text two. So now to add the functionality of not requiring a user to click a button. We could come over into our HTML and scroll down and locate the input type button. And here we see it's the on click on launch. We could copy that and then go back to the top do a quick search for body. There it is. And we could paste this in. Make sure there's a space between body and on click. But you can't click a body, right? That needs to be on load. So we'll put load. And that just says when you load the body element, um, execute that launch. So let's highlight all this and copy it. And then we're going to go to our global. We're going to paste it in there. And now, as soon as we leave that field, we see that it executed. We can even reload, reload, and it does it. Now the only task left for us to make this work the way we want is we have to get rid of all the things in here that don't matter. So here we are back at our visualization of our HTML document. And what we want to do is get rid of everything that is inside the body that is not part of the script, that is not part of the form element, and is not part of the div ID output. And this leads us to a neat feature in most web browsers. Remember, I'm using Firefox. Other browsers are quite similar, but a little bit different. Instead of going to page view, when I right click, I go to inspect element and it brings up what's called the inspector. Now this is nice because it's got the ability to collapse the HTML and I can see what is inside things and make more sense of it that way. But also, you've probably been noticing that as I roll over things, they're being highlighted. Well, that works in the inverse, too. If I come up here and I click the um, pick an element button, it lets me scroll through the web page and click the part, and it will highlight it down here. 
which is very nice. On top of that, I can make changes in here and they're temporary just for this session. So I can do some experimenting to see what would happen. I could remove this H1 and we see that it's gone. I could remove this H2 and it's gone and remove this paragraph. Now we've reached the form. So let's collapse that so we don't delete anything in the form. And there's our div that we want to protect. And we're going to delete the uh, horizontal rule and that text. And we're going to remove this hyperlink. And that, now we are down only to our form. So we need to go implement those changes for real because if I hit refresh, all my work goes away. So I've made those changes and I've copied my text and we're going to paste it into the global field. And now we see we don't have the other stuff at the top and that's great. But still the things inside of form, it's just too much stuff. We want nothing. The only thing we want is the result. And I encourage you to go in and deal with the HTML individually, see if you can get rid of these things. But one thing you'll notice is if you remove any of the uh, input elements, we're going to mess up the ability for the JavaScript to function. So the way to get rid of this, if this is for yourself and we just want to get a result quickly, is we can put some inline CSS into our form. So over here, this is the form element. We can type in style that will call the CSS and the attribute we're going to change is display and we'll set that to none. So if we select all and we copy and we put in our global field and we paste, well, we didn't get the results we expected. Now, I've left this error in here on purpose because we're using text edit and this is a thing that happens and it causes a lot of frustration. What we've actually experienced here is the fact that we typed in quotation marks while this was in rich text format. If we go up here and we say format and we make it plain text, you should always edit code in plain text. You'll notice now, see all the quotation marks? That's a normal quote. This is called a curly quote. And HTML does not know what that is. So it doesn't recognize it. Now if we put a quote in, in plain text format, we'll find that if we copy and we paste, that we get the results we're looking for. So now the only piece we need to get rid of is how do we get rid of this time equals zero seconds? We jump into our source code, we scroll to the bottom. Remember we, we knew that JavaScript was outputting into this output div. And if we didn't know that, we could load up our web page, go into inspect element, and actually scroll down, click the uh, pick an element, and highlight this and say, well, where is this coming from? Well, it's in div with the idea of output, and then it's just some standalone text. Hmm. So it tells us what we need to know. And what that means is it's not in the HTML. It's being generated by JavaScript. So one way we can hunt this down is let's highlight the ID. And we're going to go up here and do a find for it. And it located it inside the script. So now we're in the, the JavaScript inside of the body. And if we look at this line, we see that what this is saying is inside of the element called output within this document, set that to this value. And here we have the value we're trying to get rid of. And this DS, if we look at the line above, we can say, see that it's a variable DS equals this function. So this is actually our output and everything after this, we can just throw away. And we could have edited this in the inspector to see if what we're suspecting is true. So now let's highlight all this and copy and we'll do the same thing over here. And now, oh, well look at that. We have actually reached our objective. I hope that using this reverse engineering approach and using an existing JavaScript project helped make this a little bit more accessible to you. We focused on the HTML. I wanted to demonstrate that you don't need to modify JavaScript 
to make something work. Now, there are better ways and there are more efficient ways. And there are some costs associated with the way we did this. But we got our feet wet. And if you join me in the next video, we'll actually start to modify the JavaScript and we'll bypass um, the user interface elements of HTML. And we'll just get the results straight from JavaScript. In subsequent videos, we're going to dive into some of the new features in FileMaker 19 that allow us to communicate directly to and from JavaScript. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll get a notification when the next video pops up. And until then, enjoy.